Today's webinar is Closing Streets to Create Space for Walking and Biking During the COVID-19 Pandemic. We hope you and your families are well and safe during this unprecedented and chaotic time that we're all currently living through. So next, we're gonna to turn to Jody Medeiros, Executive Director of Walk San Francisco. Jody is responsible for leading Walk San Francisco's strategic work. She has a long and successful history leading communications, fundraising, and advocacy at Urban Livability, Active Transportation, and Poverty Alleviation Nonprofit. So welcome, Jody, and I'm so excited to have you here to tell us about um, your past uh, Open Streets effort and um, the campaign that you recently underwent um, in the wake of the pandemic. So tell us, tell us a little bit more. Thank you, Liz, and thank you to Rails to Trails. It's really exciting to be on this um, really esteemed panel. So Walk San Francisco, we have been around since uh, 1998, so over 20 years, and we are the only pedestrian advocacy organization focused on people walking in San Francisco. Our big city goal is really Vision Zero. We're trying to end all severe and fatal crashes by, by 2024. And Walk San Francisco really does believe that um, San Francisco can and should be the most pedestrian friendly city in the nation. So um, we are in a very urban environment, just like all of you, and millions of people already walk in San Francisco. We uh, counted that we have about 884,000 residents with about 265,000 weekday commuters and almost 25 million uh, annual visitors each year. And we know that our city has about 22% mode share for walking, which is also the same number that we have for people using public transportation. We've seen a drop in this in the last couple of years um, with the uptick of the Lyft and Uber ride share. Next slide, please. So um, why do we do this work? It's because pedestrians are the ones that are suffering the most from traffic violence in San Francisco. Uh, we had 18 pedestrian fatalities last year and it was one of our worst years since we adopted Vision Zero in 2024. Next slide. In addition to our fatalities, we know that it's also people walking who suffer the most from severe and critical injuries. And so this is our, um, our combined data with not only our police reports, but also we do uh, data with the um, SF General Hospital. And so this is why we do our work. Next slide. Um, <clears throat> why, you know, Walk San Francisco does believe that we have so many people um, walking in the city that we have this great opportunity to use all the tools in our toolbox to really get to safe spaces. Uh, we've had some success. We do have uh, Sunday streets, which happens um, six months of the year. First Sunday, um, one Sunday a month, it goes to different neighborhoods. We did get this practice from Bogota, Colombia. So, and we've been doing this for over 10 years, but we needed something that was more regular and every day. So for the last 10 years, um, I did want to sh quickly share a success story that we had in just um, this year, earlier this year. And this is our Market Street. Uh, our Market Street is our main street. It's our biggest, um, most used thoroughfare. As you can see, 75,000 weekday bus riders, 90 buses an hour. 500,000 people who walk down the street every day, but yet we know that five out of 10 of our most dangerous intersections is also on this street. So this is why um, Walk San Francisco has been really busy in putting our back into this campaign. And after over 10 years, we did win the approval of Market Street to become what we call our Better Market Street Plan. Um, it's funny that this was started as a pavement project uh, about 10 years ago. It's been a huge collaborative between multiple nonprofit organizations, Walk San Francisco, San Francisco Bicycle Coalition. Um, and what it really did take was a ton of political will to, to make this happen. What really um, the start of this project was, was the removal of private vehicles on Market Street. So this also does include the Lyft and the Ubers. And um, what we really saw was um, that 
this is um, something that we could celebrate. We're not going to see the results of this because of the pandemic, but in the first five weeks, we did see bus ridership increase, bike ridership increase, and uh, we're waiting to see the results once traffic patterns are back to um, normal and people are back to their routines, what kind of improvements we're going to see on the uh, crashes between pedestrians and, um, and turning vehicles. So that's a success that I think that we are um, very proud of. And now I want to talk about the campaign that we most recently did that was um, in response to our pandemic. And this is um, trying to get our JFK Drive in Golden Gate Park car free. Uh, so our park is celebrating 150 years. Uh, our April 4th celebration had to be canceled because of the pandemic, but um, the park is one of these uh, gems in our city. It's, uh, as you can see, we've had car free space for more than 40 years. Um, and we've also had a car free space on Saturdays for more than 10 years. So this is not something new to our city. This park has had cars um, restricted in the park. And so, um, we really wanted to capitalize on this possibility and see what we could do uh, for and during the pandemic. So next slide, please. On March 18th, when we were already in the heart of um, the shelter in place, Walk San Francisco launched an online campaign to make JFK Drive car free and increase our space for people. Uh, we were in deep con contact with this San Francisco mayor's office, uh, Mayor London Breed, and our partners at the Bike Coalition were talking to all the general players. We're talking to Reckon Park and Director of Transportation, and we had buy-in from those other agencies. Um, we had great confidence that this was going to go forward, and it was pretty miraculous, just like um, Philadelphia. We had uh, 500 signatures in the first 24 hours and 1,400 signatures to say, yes, let's make this a car-free space um, every day during the pandemic. And um, we really did have our everybody's ear. What ended up happening was that the mayor's office said that um, leading the pandemic was our Department of Public Health, and they had the final say. And um, so unfortunately, on uh, March 25th, we had to, um, in a press conference, our head of public health specifically talked about JFK and um, said that he was not going to let this go through. He, this was emphatic. It was clear. He thought that it was going to do much more harm than good. He thought that it was going to encourage congregation in the park and not the social distancing that we really firmly believe needs to happen during this pandemic. Um, and this put us in a really tough spot as a nonprofit organization and as an advocacy group. And this was something that, you know, we've talked to all of the players and we had to, um, we backed down. We basically ended up saying that while we thought that this was a really good idea. We think that opening our streets um, for people in a time when we really need to have more space. Um, but we also feel that this was not the time to be pushing our Department of Public Health when they were really um, focused on flattening the curve and keeping people safe and making sure that we all had our, our safe distances. They are still encouraging people to go out and walk and bike, which is great. We still have that. They have closed all of our playgrounds. They've closed our parking lots to things like the beaches. And um, they are really threatening to close our parks if they see people congregating. So in, in his eyes, it would be really irresponsible for our Department of Public Health to close streets and um, encourage people to go to our parks. So, of course, we are deeply disappointed, um, but we also believe that we are in this for the long haul. Car-free uh, JFK is a, a 
a campaign that is um, ongoing. It's something that we really think that we could get after this pandemic, that we have more relationships to build, we have more to do. And so what we have done in showing our allegiance and our understanding of what's really important is we've pivoted and we've really started creating these messages of how you can do activities in your neighborhood. We've put up other different blogs regarding uh, what you can do with your children on walks and keeping that active, but staying to your neighborhood. And the other thing that we're really keeping in mind is Golden Gate Park is in one part of our city. Once we start focusing on what you can do in your neighborhood, that makes it a very equitable approach to how people can still get out, get healthy, um, get some fresh air. I mean, it's the cleanest air we've had in San Francisco for decades. And um, it really does allow people to uh, get the mental health and the physical health space that they really need and to hopefully keep the, the six foot distance. So um, that is our latest campaign and um, we will still stay busy in trying to push for more car free streets in San Francisco. Thank you so much, Jody. That was great. And I know we'll we'll dig in a little bit more um, in the Q&A section. So um, thank you so much. And then just a friendly reminder, we have built a really wonderful resource page specifically in response to the pandemic with all kinds of great resources on it. So we really encourage you to go there and we'll be adding to it all the time. 